the jungle and he's heard before a status that he's been kind of ironically named as. He struggled in previous splits, but this split he has been on fire, and you can see that synergy with his new teammates, especially Deft. They're on the same wavelength right there. The Nunu Jinx walking around the lane is a terror for the enemies to see. So ban out that Nunu. Yeah, so Lissandra, the next ban there for Worldly as well. Either you'll consider the last one. Nah, still open. Have to think that that might get banned here. Aluka, been a bit hot and cold. Rumble, another strong champion they could go with. And not too long left. And it actually, Zareth going to be the ban there. Ninja really getting targeted now. And Ninja, when he's got through the laning phase, when he's got, got comfortable laning phases behind him, he's actually been very capable. He's still, we still haven't been able to say this is the breakout carry performance from Ninja necessarily. But he's very consistent on those long-range mages. Jace has kind of fallen out of popularity. Zareth has been perhaps the most picked mid in the LPL this split. So ban it away. Yeah, and I like this pickup a lot from Odalute. We talk about Jarvan being very important for Spirit, especially when they do have Jarvan as the first pick. The EDG pick up two massive picks themselves. They're skipping the NAR for now. Kassadin and Janna are their picks one and two. And I absolutely think that when World Elite gets Jarvan, they just look like a much better team. They level up. They look like that mid middle of the pack team rather than one of the real strugglers. But to give up Kassadin right here, whether it's Takara or Pawn, is a massive price to pay just for that point and click initiation that Jarvan provides. Yeah, we've seen Mako kind of come in as a new support for EDG. Still plays a lot of the engaged supports that Mouse did on his team, but is a bit more capable than someone like Janna, and he's very strong on that champion as well. So EDG looking good. If Nark comes through here as well, that could be even crazier of a draft for EDG, but Wadley are going to stick to what they know. And this is Wadley's thing. They pick for comfort almost always. Thresh and Ezreal are their two and three. Ezreal, the, the trademark champion of World Elite as an organization, you have to say. Weijia did so many wonderful things on that champion. We saw just how much value they got out of the, the uh, Ezreal pick last week against Vici. They're blind picking that lane, so it opens up a lot of options for Deft here. Whether he wants to go for the wave clear Sivir, whether he wants to go for a hyper carry, Ezreal doesn't provide a lot of lane pressure. He bas they're basically saying, you pick whatever you want, we've got this Ezreal. Just a reminder, by the way, what do they do have two Ezreal wins in this LPL? One of them is Ninjas. He's played mid Ezreal before. Okay, so I'll, I'll take that back. We might see a mid Ezreal right here. It's a decent matchup against Kassin, especially early with that ranged auto attack, but... Wow, they've, they've definitely given away Deft's Corky right here. EDG have been by far the best team at exploiting power spikes in the LPL this split. You never see Deft in the bottom lane with that Trinity Force. Once he picks up that item, he's grouping for skirmishes, so he's pushing down those turrets. Yeah, we've got a good jungler for clear. They've actually Lee Sin, not something you played that much of now that I think about it, but he's going to be Corky for Deft. Lots of flex picks here as well. EDG have lots of control over their last pick, which I really like because Cassidy is so flexible. And what are trying to figure it out? Looks like it might be Ninja Zezreal. Again, more of a comfort pick for him. Aluka might even go back to Rumble as well. And SDYZ might also go full comfort and pick up his Kaelin. So that's what Waterly do. But the problem with this draft pop is I don't know if it does anything. It's a very interesting draft here. Obviously, a lot of poke, obviously, a lot of wave click from Caitlyn. They have good sieging, but they're relying so much on Spirit in that front line. The only true front liner here is Spirit. What I will say is they've struggled with Rumble picks in the past, especially picking Rumble and almost need to use the equalizer as an engage tool because they've had no other setup CC. They've got that point and click engage from Jarvan. They've got the Thresh right here. They do have a decent Rumble comp. But if they get behind in the mid game, if they get, if there's any sort of fed Cassidy, or if EDG get any sort of lead, and with that last lock in, it's going to add a bit more flavor, right? Until so we see the return of the Vega. But if EDG get ahead in the mid game, I don't see any way back for this comp. I assumed that was a joke yesterday. I mean, not a joke. Paul was here, had a very confident series against Ganty. I thought he might have picked something. Yeah, he's played a bit, but just kind of having a bit of fun and feeling confident, you know, being that emotional player that we've seen a lot of in this scene. The fact that he's taken it here again against World Elite, I mean, again, a matchup EDG expect to come in favored, but that's very gutsy from Pawn to pick Vega in this first game. There was a post-game interview uh, yesterday after their win where they asked about whether Pawn, you know, the Vega was surprised by the Vega pick, understandably. They asked, is this something to expect? Will we see it again? And there definitely was the indication that they'd been practicing in scrims. This is a champion they treat very seriously. To see it again so quickly is very interesting to me, but... Uh, Vega provides so many interesting things, especially with that event horizon. Yeah, I mean, Pawn's been playing fantastically all weekend, and basically all throughout the LPL, so I'll trust him for sure in Vega, but very cool to see Vega back in this first game against World Elite, and I think uh, EDG have a fairly solid drop, cast in a massive power pick here as well, and I, I'll keep saying it about World Elite, their drafting worries me, because they only seem to pick comfort lanes, and that's fine, your players need to be comfortable, but it gets to the point where you have to make a sacrifice somewhere. And it, the, the confidence of the Vega pick is interesting here because there's no mid lane AP champion, right? It's not going to be AP Ezra. It's definitely going to be either the Trinity Force or the Blue Ezra right here. So to so confidently pick the Vega against 
only a rumble really for AP damage right here. You can see the confidence of that bet. They're picking it for the comp right here. It's not to win lane. Well, we'll see what happens with Pawns Vega this time as we get right into the game. Welcome on to the Rift for this first game between World Lead and EDG. Our last best of two for the evening, though. And we'll see if EDG can go 6-0 in games over this weekend of the LPL and catapult themselves into first, well and truly into first place. Yeah, I mean, they can open up a massive lead in the standings right here. Something they would not have expected at the start of the day's play. The, both the, the second and third place team have effectively dropped two points in games they were expected to comfortably win. So EDG... If they can get their win right here, they just have so much momentum going into the next game week. Well, we've talked a lot about comfortable wins today, and EDG are looking for the same thing here, but no one is comfortable after what's happened today. Insane games today in the LPL. If you've missed somewhere, please check out the VODs when we're done. But right now, we have this game to contend with. And EDG, if any team is going to come into a matchup where they feel favored and look excellent, it's a team like Edward Gaming. They've looked so polished. Yeah, they've just been so consistent. That's been the big thing. When we see the best of OMG, that's when the superlatives come out. That's when we're saying best team in the world three holy trinity of three carries right there looking so strong but the variance has been clear but in both their losses the three losses actually i believe right now by omg they've looked weak they've played reactive but edg they've played their own game they've played very proactively and smartly with their rotations in the mid game barring one series against lgd they'll feel confident about coming out of this series with a 2-0 but World Elite, there are no pushovers after those last three series. No, not at all. And the Pawn Vega is back, which is the good news for any fans here. Pawn has just looked fantastic. He might have claimed the spot off call for best mid laner in the LPL. But we'll have to see how he performs today. Looks like we are going to break it into standard lanes, though. So STYZ is going to get a 2v2 with his Caitlyn. It's a very interesting lane matchup in the mid lane between Ezreal and... Vega, on the one hand, we expect Ezra to get some heavy harass in early, but because he can't control the way, because he can't really lane shove, Vega should farm very happily right here, and there's always kill pressure when Kula comes in because of the event horizon right here. So it should be a fairly safe landing phase for Vega, someone who's preyed upon by so many champions in the mid, but not, potentially not this Ezreal. Yeah, love this aggression from Spirit as always. Well. We saw him sneak in towards the EDG red buff and looking to steal this away, possibly even get some quick buffs. Looks like he's gotten a small camp and then started this buff as well. I think it was Spirit who did this yesterday as well, so he's starting to get a lot more aggressive as a jungler. And Jarvan is definitely his go-to champion when he wants to be consistent with his lane pressure and be that utility-focused jungler. It's not the Riven jungle that we saw in the first week a couple of times right there that World Elite struggled to adapt to. It's more picking for the meta, picking a very strong laning champion and going from there. Yeah, here's the force up top as well. Spirit going in onto Koro who does use the flash. So I think EDG must know now that the red's been taken. So I assume Kalev's going to run down towards World Elite's red. But good pressure there from Spirit. Burns a very quick flash from Cassidy. Yeah, it's a smart rotation absolutely right here. Kalev much more passive in his jungle opening start. We saw a series yesterday where Kakao played Lee Sin. Didn't gank a lane to level 6. Of course that was with the Yasuo. So there was obvious comp synergy right there. But EDG... In yeah, the top lane, this is just a camp now. Spirit is going to run in and hit him in the face. Aluka gets low, but flashes out, and first blood goes to Rumble. Excellent turret juggling right there. Just the right amount of turret hits towards the Rumble. They pick up the exit kill. 1-0 is Aluka right here. He's shown a lot of trouble uh, with this, with maintaining this lane snowball into carrying a game, but that's a massive advantage in the top lane for a weak laner. koro has got to be careful. So they're going back in. He's teleported into that lane, and Koro's so low. Aluka, though, he's going to pay the price here, and Koro gets the trade kill. After executing so well, that was a very questionable turret dive right there. If Spirit could have got a, a first auto in, then use the EQ, they might have had just enough damage, but it's almost a needless grinding of experience and gold to this Cassidy. After holding him down so well with that first kill, they tried to punish what you could have interpreted as an aggressive uh, teleport back to lane. But they paid the price right here. Yeah, and Cora coming back, maybe looking to get a bit more aggressive. We'll just stay safe here. Double Doran's ring for Cassidy in the top, but Aluka's gone something very wonky here. Negatron Cloak has been rushed there in the top lane. Yeah, it might have been just a gold value situation. It might have been just that he was going to opt into an Abyssal Scepter eventually. So there is an obvious item build path that does give him more magic reduction. 
but it is a questionable first item pickup. It could just be I'm spending all of the 720 gold I have. It's going to be relevant statistics in the lane. And look, Spirit's back. Spirit is well and truly camping this lane right now. Koro is in so much trouble. Spirit just hitting him in the face. Doesn't need to try and get the skill shot. And Aluka gets another kill. And it's almost an in-joke among the casters how much clear love has been camping lanes. Spirit right here up the top lane. He's got a five-star result. We've said it before, but it's been opened once again. It's in full service. Almost could have been three deaths for Koro at this point. Yeah, it seems like Spirit's kind of moving in on the hotel business there. Clitiff's just actually been farming, trying to counter jungle a bit. Did take away the red buff from Mortal Elite, so not going to get three buff, but so much pressure by Spirit early. And this is much more ganking than we're used to by Spirit. He is going very aggressive here. He's so aggressive. It makes sense against a cast, and he has no escape till level six. After six, we don't expect to see Spirit up top at all, barring a very calculated three or four man turret dive. So get the ganks in while they count early. Yeah, business might be blossoming soon. Spirit's actually maybe returning here as well. And it's funny that we mentioned Jarvan for Spirit against Clear Love again, because the games where Clear Love's really gone off and ganked is actually on Jarvan. Uh, it's, it's just a very surreal start to them. We don't normally see effectively three successful ganks in the top lane. Of course, the turret dive, not so successful, but it was close. Aggressive pink ward being put down by Spirit as well. He is really committing to camping this cast in the top side, but Koro, with the extra experience that he got from that kill trading with Aluka, actually picking up a decent amount of experience. Spirit going to come in again for the 2v2 now, help clear out that pink ward, and they will defend, but STYZ in the bottom lane, getting bullied a bit now by Def's Corky. Even though this is 4.21, the first patch where Corky's missile speed was nerfed, as we see, Spirit up top again. He is still eating consistent Phosphorus Bomb Harass. So that's just laning mistakes from SDYZ right here. At 650 plus range, he should not be eating any of that harass. He needs to really put his head on tight right here. Otherwise, Deft is going to run away with this lane. The fact that Deft even has a minus CS lead is pretty insane as well. That was an awesome Valkyrie as well to dodge that out. Deft, a little low on mana now, but they'll push this in and probably look to go back. In the mid lane, the first buys have come through right here. You see why this Ezreal will struggle to harass out the Vega in lane because he's not spending any gold on combat stats just yet. Starting to scale up that tier. Although he does have the harass advantage, the right-click auto advantage, he doesn't have any wave pushing, as we see. Wow, some very aggressive rotations yeah, coming in. Yeah, Pornfire Spirit actually took the long and winding road around the back here to try and get the bottom laners, but it's kind of run out of spells here so far. So going to have to reset. Might look for a dive here if Tef can push it in, but I think Pawns is going to have to give it up. Very... Fortuitous that Spirit was there looking for him. Well, almost was the situation there where Pawn was the one making up for Clear Love's lack of early game pressure right here. Koro will thank him, just knowing that Spirit's not in the top lane for once. Yeah, that's true. Pawn doing a bit of warding, I guess, for himself on the Vega. Did fall behind now in CS, actually. As that ninja's about 11 up here. Koro going to fight Aluka, but Aluka very strong right now at level 6, especially when the overheated flame spit is in his face. And after all the base damage nerfs, and a very early Negatron Cloak coming out here. The harass coming out from Koro, it's just not worth the mana. It's not, the mana to damage cost is not in the advantage of the Cassid and Harass right here. He's put three points into his Q right here. He hasn't been able to level up that Force Pulse early. That's how you know when a Cassid is comfortable in lane. He stops maxing the Q and starts putting points in the E, the Force Pulse. And understandably after that early start, he's expecting to farm from range because Spirit shows up in his lane every other minute. Yeah, not too comfortable here. The Spirit has slowed down a bit, actually towards the bottom side. Now Def going to go on to SDYZ. Foster Storm just landed, but Spirit's in there. Def with a good little juke will move around. He's actually going to go back in and try and get it done. Looks like UJ trying to go in. Kara's actually come down here as well. The teleport, true drop run, just live, but a good hook there is going to give Aluka another kill. Yeah, Aluka's 3-1-0 and oh right here, right now. They hasn't been able to open up a CS advantage, but so many early kills. You have to think this should give World Elite exclusive control over the Dragon because a three-kill rumble, the Equalizer will shred. UJ does find Maker there. It's a good flash. Death sentence to Kayla will come through. Equalizer going to move in, and UJ actually will get the next kill there. Now the blue buff looking to get stolen as well. EDG getting their jungle ravaged. Yeah, absolutely. They, they've matched the teleports right here, so they should be able to take both the blue buff. They could go for Dragon, but it seems like they consider that biting off a bit too much, and they want to get Deft. Yeah, they are going to go in for a tower dive. Deft's very low, still does no summoners left to speak. We'll have a Valkyrie ready to go. UJ getting very low. Actually, good outplay by Deft. Gets a solo kill in the one before now clear up coming down to protect his good friend and Def gets out scot-free watching the earlier trade with Def right there the first thing that strikes you is just how uh, steady he is with his summoner spell usage right there he used his flash and his heal so late in the trades right there that he still was in such a position to stay at the lane and so confident in his use of Valkyrie picks up the trade kill doesn't fall down a world-class AD carry in the bottom lane 
Name was great, but Def might even be better. Def looks very strong here, and that Phage helped so much in that little dance, but Dragon might go over to EDG now as well after that, and World Elite, for all the aggression, they might have just been a little too aggressive here. Very awkwardly, a cannon minion did come and give basically an exact timer to World Elite, so they'll thank that secret agent minion right there. But it's a huge deal that this has come through here, because we just talked about, it's a three kill rumble. There should be no chance of, of EDG being able to compete for Dragon. They actually have the Dragon advantage right here. And although they don't have the, the timer advantage, it is going to be an even timer thanks to that cannon minion. It's still a massive early win here for EDG. It's not going to be gold, global gold. They're still behind 1500 gold. And you know we always debate the value of that early Dragon right there. They shouldn't have been in with a shot of it whatsoever. So they'll take that bonus from that early uh, overzealous turret dive. Yeah, and Aluka using his ulti in that early skirmish just to kill the support basically might have cost World Elite their potential objective. So they're playing very aggressively getting kills, but they're maybe not playing the map as cleanly as they could. That said, World Elite off to a great start here. Ninja now also starting to power up as well from the mid lane. Got himself a fade, so we're going to move into a quick Trinity Force. Yeah, it's going to be the Trinity Force. It's going to be the earlier power spike coming through, which I very much like. You never want to opt into a late game against a Cassid and Vega comp. You consider Kassan a hyper-carry top laner. Vega's by far a hyper-carry mid laner, having that infinite scaling with his Q right there. So you never want to opt into the to late game whatsoever, so it makes sense. Go for that earlier power spot. And I feel like we see this a lot in late game situations as well, or late game team comps or champions, where a team always wants to find a way to bridge the gap from, you know, okay, here's my early game, I kind of got to rough it out, and I have to get to late game summer, but there's this big bit in the middle where, you know, there are dragons being taken and towers being felled. I feel like Def's job this game is to bridge that gap as the mid-game powerhouse for EDG. Absolutely. With two scaling laners, it's all on Def to pick up that early Trinity Force, show up in the mid lane, start grouping, and just equalize the pressure that's inevitably going to be put out by this Ezreal and Caitlyn duo right here. Spirit is really aggressive, actually going in there, gets smited and altered there by Pawn. The Red Dove, I think, went over to Clearly, who smited it, and Spirit is again far too aggressive in that yeah. jungle. Yeah, needless death, and down bottom we see Death going aggressive as well. Yes, yeah, he was going in, UJ finds the hook, and the box comes out as well. A good ult, or no, bad ult, I should say, actually frees UJ there and make it. Yep, kind of stands there for a second, looks at Death and says, I'm sorry. That was a bit surreal, that whole interaction right at the end, but no kills come through and at the top. Koro is having absolutely no fun trying to trade, but he's kept him up in CS remarkably well in a Cassidy matchup, only being 10 CS down against a three kill rumble. Yeah, it looks like his Rod of Age is going to be a little later here down the bottom. Actually, Def going into UJ. Clearlove has come down as well. The Fos form does land a Def. Will clear it? Not. Clearlove gets it as well. Def is really being denied some kills here, but he'll get the assist. Yeah, look, he'll take the slight buzz kill of the assist coming through right there. World Elite, some of the aggression coming through from Spirit will commend him on his early moves, but he's just going crazy in the enemy jungle right there. Jumping into a Vega with all his abilities, even his summoners up right there, is suicide. And look, it should be a kill uh, transferred over to EDG right there. And Spirit just needs to take a de deep breath. They've done very good things in this early game, but they're really much, at this point, in danger of throwing away a wonderful first 10 minutes. Yep, so we'll see here as Aluka back in towards the top. That CS event is kind of narrowed now. Aluka feeling fairly comfy with his Sork Shrews on his feet as well, but only about 10 CS ahead there of the Cassidy. And Ninja doing very well against Pawn actually in the Vega matchup. 20 CS or so ahead there in that one with uh, actually a pickaxe. Now I guess he wants his mana immunity before he moves into the rest of his Triforce. And we're checking in the bottom lane right here. Death's ahead in CS, which lets you know in a Caitlyn lane, oh, as s 2 in a lot of trouble, might get away. Clear Love does land the Q, but won't follow up. And a good lance in there from UJ to save s 2 and also, I saw Pawn on the side of my screen catching Spirit in transition right there. Def being ahead in CS in the one laning matchup that Corky really struggles in. So we see more trading happening across the map. It's everywhere, pastry time. Yeah, it really is. Luca popped his ulti onto Kauru, but couldn't quite finish the kill. And Kassan will walk away there. Def's actually getting flayed back now. Has to be careful. Uses the Valkyrie to keep himself safe, though. Mako will come in with a shield. So much action happening across the map right here, UJ. Yeah, Mako does get grabbed there as well. STYZ looks in for the Q, and good damage there actually by Water Elite. Uh, I guess kind of have an item advantage with the BF Sword pickaxe. It's very close, but Def a little too low on health. Probably going to have to look to back soon. But there's no way he should be so far ahead in CS. I mean, he's even right now, but the path for this lane for Corky would be maybe, maybe 15 down. So to be even right here. After all the early trading makes a lot of sense, and Death's going in aggressive again. Yeah, Death apparently always wants to go in. Exhaust comes through from Aiko, but STYZ will get out with another Lantern, but EDG are not afraid to fight in this bottom lane, and it showed just in the pressure on the CS difference alone. I mean, obviously Corky's big struggle in this lane is the range advantage. He eats so many more auto attacks when going for CS, when going for trades. 
that it kind of makes sense that he's only going for burst trades right here because in the extended laning phase, he's just going to struggle against the inherent kid of Caitlyn. Yeah, it just shows such such champion knowledge. Though, to Valkyrie and aggressively into a Thresh, Caitlyn consistently and be able to win those trades. So very well played by EDD's AD carry. Pawn in the meantime has got his blue buff, finished up his Athens as well. So looking pretty healthy here, trying to push Ezreal back a little further, but Spirits wanted his way into the bottom lane. Yeah, Spirits showing him his way in the bottom lane. It's probably tail between his legs a little bit after some questionable engages, but he's feeling smelling a bit of blood in the bot lane. I think Deft pretty smart does it. Both summoners as well will play this very casually. And looks like Spirit might have to give it up. It's actually already wandered out of the bottom lane and Dragon back up in 40 seconds. EDG practically stole away the first one. I imagine Aluka wants to hit level 11 and make sure he's there for the second. Absolutely. I'll tab over to him right here. He's about halfway through, maybe a little bit below. It's going to be difficult for him to get enough experience before the Dragon spawns especially. Well, Pawn just deletes Spirit off the map. They're using the Vega combo. And again, another good catch by Pawn in transition. Able to kill the jungler this time. You might wonder why this is happening. Again, it's the double sight stone has been completed by by Clear Love and Mako in this game. So the important factor here is they're getting aggressive wards in and there's so much deletion damage coming out of Pawn that whenever they catch Spirit in transition, he's dying. Yeah, bottom turret goes down there as well. So Death will clean that one up on his cocky. EDG will actually equalize the turrets after Luka took out the top one there as well. STYZ struggling for farm here in this bottom lane. Almost done with his Infinity Edge, but Corky's going to have this Triforce for the next Dragon Fire. But EDG are already starting the Dragon. The start of the Dragon is very low already. Doesn't look like Wardley is going to be any spot to contest it. Two Dragon advantage for this EDG late game comp right here. That's a hole that Water League going to have to work very hard to get out of. Yeah, and Spirit, you know, getting killed in transition there costs them a lot. They're not able to walk back in time to contest for that next dragon. EDG take a very easy dragon, controlling so well on the bottom half of this map. And this is the thing for EDG. They're such a good dragon team. They control the objective so well. And I'm not super surprised when their bottom lane is this good. No, they have such a wonderful bottom lane. They're so on point with their warding compared to Water League. It's almost night and day here. I will compliment, compliment Water League for having three pink wards in their their inventory. They put down two of them, I can see right here, but they're getting the pink wars. They're trying to get back into the vision game right here. But clear love, we might criticize his ganking, but the vision control of him and Mako has been excellent. It really has here. And what it did do a five man group there in the mid to try and do deal some damage to that turret. Ezreal, Caitlyn, not too bad actually when it comes to Siege, so they have that there, but couldn't crack the tower with Janna in the way and Pawn helping with the wave clear. Now Pawn coming back to his lane, needlessly large rod already done, and the Trinity Force has been finished for death. It's such an awkward thing because you have such a good Siege comp between Ezreal and Caitlyn, effectively two AD carries, one of them very close to their Trinity Force power spike right here, but you're against Pawn's. Uh, Vega, and you have to understand, Event Horizon has a surprisingly large range when it's cast at max range right here. So it's so awkward. You have to be so careful when you get those turret autos in. Against any other champion, basically, it'd be fairly easy for Wally to group and siege down a turret. But with just one Event Horizon, a regular ability, EG can change this game. Yeah, Wadley are going to push in though, try and take this mid turret. Should look to get it here. Death Sentence just wide there for UJ, but the second turret of the game will go to World Elite here, and they'll be happy to pick that up. Yeah, but EDG were happy with that trade. They have Cassidy free farming in the bot lane. He's actually managed to open up a CS advantage, and that's something that we have to really return to here. Remember just the level of camp we saw in top lane. Spirit with four to five ganks in the first, what, eight minutes of the game right here before Cassidy ever hit level six. To be ahead in CS at this point, it's a compliment to Koro, but they've managed to find space, EDG, as a team for Koro to farm safely. The funny space for Pawn as well, and Aluka actually could be in a whole host of trouble. Mako coming in there, clear up, kicks him back in the face, and Aluka very dead there to Pawn. The equalizer goes down, but no one left to equalize. And if anything, the only reaction there was going to be the fifth member coming in. We saw the teleport was just cancelled by Koro, realizing that kill was definitely sewn up. It's going to be the second outer turret coming down, and EDG's rotations, their water giving them a significant advantage over water lead. And that's been true of EDG basically throughout the LPL so far. They have looked on point as a team with their objective control and their map movement. And they're showing it here again, World League with so much aggression, but EDG basically just took it in their stride. And I always love thinking about item timings, uh, power troughs, power spikes. EDG are the one team you want to watch if you want to learn for your ranked team, for your competitive team, how to really take advantage of power spikes. Deft always is grouping with that Trinity Force. It's no coincidence that he has that item. He's with his team. That's when they start to do their transitions. 
get those picks and pick up structures. Yeah, and the nice thing about that is it frees up farm for the two mage hyper carries here. Korra and Pawn have been able to pick up more free from now by moving around the map because the core of Janna, uh, Corky, and Lee Sin is so strong and their vision control is so excellent. I mean, you just consider that trio right there. Corky is one of the best champions at taking structures. He has those spammable spells to proc the Trinity Force. He's got Janna next to him for disengage. Lee Sin for engage and disengage potential. That three-man unit is so hard to get away from a turret. Meanwhile, Cassin and Vega are basically free farming, or they're grouping and have excellent skirmishes. It's just wonderful drafting, but understanding their comp and champions so, so well, even on these off-meta picks like the Vega. These rotations are absurd, by the way. Three towers in about 30 seconds there for EDG, taking out the mid turret there as well. The CS is starting to catch up across the board. It's ahead now for Koro, actually, although Pawn is still slightly behind. He's even closed the gap from about 20 to 10. Now going to get the blue buff as well. World Elite, all that aggression from the early game has just been lost. And it's just, I mean, the first five minutes was very akin to the earlier series as we've seen today. Lot, a bloodbath, lots of early rotation, lots of early moves, a kind of a tussle and seesaw of aggression. Whereas now we're more in the EDG mindset. We've seen about 10 minutes of very smart rotational play. It's just a level above the competition in the LPL, at least consistently. There are times when OMG, they get everything they want, they get the early, early game, and they look like EDG do on a good day. Same thing about Snake. When they get those early rotations in, they can really blow away a team. But EDG, it's the consistency that we look at them for. And they're so wonderful at understanding when they need to group, when they need to push, when they're on the back foot, when they're on the front foot. They have so much understanding, and that's the mark of a top team. Yeah, well, on the front foot right now, 1,400 gold in the league with the next dragon up at a minute 15. Actually wandering up towards the top, maybe trying to cut off a Luka, but he should be able to complete that recall before it happens. Clearly, they're actually going to connect the one. Does go in, can't cancel it, though. A good wall, but not enough. Yeah, no fortuitous blind Q coming out from Lee Sin right there, so... That doesn't pick up a kill. Of course, there was no objective right there, so they didn't need a pick or a rotation right there because there was no objective to pick up. And EDG, the farm is on, and this castle is getting big. Yeah, I mean, so is Pawn. He's actually farmed up to a death cap at 20 minutes in this game, so looking to really burst some people down. You talked about it. It's double AD for Lee. No AP targets. Clear love. Does not follow in there on that cube. I think he thought about it there. Didn't have his flash up to kick SDYZ back in, but again with Pawn, quick death cap. It, his ult still scales with AP. You don't, there might not be AP base, but you're still going to blow up AD carries. Well, I mean, the deletion potential is always there with Vega, and we're talking about an Ezreal and a Caitlyn. You know, very low base stats, no magic resistance or maybe third, fourth, fifth item. It doesn't matter that he doesn't get the bonus damage from the AP rage. It's still going to be doing plenty of damage. Yeah, good stun there from Pawn as well. Keep Spirit and Aluka off his back. Dragon is up in 10 seconds. EDG were trying to clear out some more wards. Looks like Spirit will defend the pink wall that Pawn was trying to clear out here. Aluka could be in trouble. Equalizer goes down, but Pawn just misses the event horizon. Now in trouble. Vega going to get dunked there by the Cataclysm. Almost kills Spirit with the ulti, but that's a free kill for World Elite. Yeah, smart user gap closes. The real big weakness of Vega is if that event horizon isn't enough, when that's on that long cooldown, he does struggle. Oh but Death's going God, in. Death going so hand there. UJ pops the box, clear up, gets bucked in, but Korra's around the back now for a flank. A good mock up Gale there by Jana is on. Aluka could be in trouble as Korra's ripping into pieces. Death still firing in, gets another kill under threat. Still alive there as STYZ will finally pick up a trade kill, but Cassid is going off here in this fight. There's the ace for EDG, five for three. And he managed to equalize kills with Aluka right there, getting massive mountains of gold right there comes out of that fight with another cool thousand on top of his freshly shopped Marilla Nomicon. EDG are going off pastry time. That was a nice teleport for Koro. Let's see it again. We see the replay. Def goes in so aggressively to get the first kill and watch how long it takes for him to fall. First it's an excellent defensive flash from Mako to keep Def alive right here. His heal is so late. He managed to get in that extra damage to get SDYZ so low and then it's Ezreal. He's doing a lot of damage but has no answer whatsoever for Koro and he's... Oh, EDG are looking good. Yep, they are. They've been looking good all weekend, Papa Smithy, and this game is no exception. As we said, they're already first place in the standings. They would love to clear a big lead in front of them for first place as well, and they're looking to do that right here, going for their third straight dragon. His spirit gets caught again, just gets obliterated by the ulti, just lives there with his W on, but that's another dragon to Edward Gaming. Absolutely. He lives right there. He doesn't pad the stats of Vega, but he does indeed pad the dragons right here. It's going to be the third one. We complimented on them on their rotation. It's so much easier when you have that extra 5% movement speed. They're usually in the right spot. They're definitely going to be there now. Yeah, there's a reason EDG are the best Dragon Snowball team in the LPL. Not only do they control the objectives so well, but when they get the buffs, they're so good at snowballing them. And this is a big lead for EDG, and it doesn't look like it. 2,500 gold, you might think, is actually not that bad here. But the way EDG play and how they play when they're looking comfortable, 
This game could not be going any better for them. And it's, it's, it's an interesting fact that you bring up. There's a small gold lead, and when you look down at some of the power spikes being hit by Waterly, some of them are quite good timing. We see the Mirror Man is already completed along with the Trinity Force, so those Qs are being doing very big damage coming out of the Ezreal right here. Infinity Edge and uh, Static Shiv right there. Very good item timings from the carries right here. Of course, with all the early snowball from Aluka, it doesn't matter that he's 40 CS down. He's very teamfight relevant right here. But just with that huge objective snowball, that's almost a bonus from EG. They wouldn't have assumed they could get OSTYZ. Yeah, he's in trouble. And Vega is at it again, it seems like. Does get locked up by Pawn, but can't quite get killed. Ulti was up, but didn't get used, so was able to be freed. Face of the mountain from Yuji helping out there. Aluka actually finds depth to clear, but clear level clean him out. The ace in the hole comes when he just lives, and now SDYZ gets beaten by Pawn. The Druid Shop Barrage goes wide, and EDG now going back in Pawn. Gets locked up, but a good ult there from Mako might keep him safe. Pawn is kiting back and forth. A great event, Horizon. Gonna keep him safe, and now Ninja gonna dive in there, but another good Gale, and now Koro coming in to clean up. Mako gets hooked, Aluka goes down to Pawn, and UJU better run. There's Koro going in for the Force Pulse. Slow there comes in as well. He will try a flash. No, doesn't have it. Oh my god! That was almost amazing, but Koro gets another ace. A 5 for 0 clean ace coming out from EDG. A 25-minute Baron, they'll start right there. The hero was Mako, of course, because he's picked up so many assists. 10 assists already, and all the global gold that was picked up. Look at that item. He had a 23-minute Mikhail's Crucible. You'll remember they increased the gold cost to stop there being snowball crucibles on the rift right here. But having it so early was able to uh, use that Crucible on Pawn. He lived when he should have certainly died. And EDG with five members strong take them down. And full credit to you, Jay. That flash could not have been timed any better, but Korra had another riff walk left. And you can't get away from Cassidy when that happens. EDG really rolling now. Six at 6,000 uh, 6, gold and counting as my brain just can't really comprehend what's going on. EDG are just playing out of this world. And, and it's they, been that way all weekend. And they put that goal to good use. Look at that. A straight avoid staff picked up by Pawn right here. Doesn't matter that there's no AP targets to kill. He's going to kill anyone with that build right there. The Bloodthirster finished from Corky makes him even safer on that poke, hitting even harder. They've got the Baron buff riding as well. And look, when this Cassidy shows up, we've seen the power of Cassidy in previous and Let Me's Cassidy in last series was wonderful itself, but... Uh, it's a big gas in the middle, in I the mean, top lane. I mean, the fact that Koro's even in this game at the power point he is, is ridiculous given how much pressure Spirit put there. Aluka now in a whole host of trouble. Koro just going to chase in if he wants to, decides to leave him alone for now. And EDG can just push down these waves with the Baron buff. Yeah, but we might see a bit more skirmishing as UJ's caught. Yeah, Pawn getting to lock him up here. UJ very dead there as Koro gets that kill. Pawn doesn't even give him the honor of the ultimate. And the scariest thing here for World Elite is they had one plan in the early game, and that's completely shut down Koro. And for that, I give them 10, 10 out of 10. Wonderful top marks for that. But uh, it's made no difference whatsoever Ninja, in this you're game. you so much trouble. Clear up kicks him back and Koro gets a kill. Spirit now in trouble. The ulti comes in for Pomba. but Dev cleans out the kill. SDY is even looking to be the next to fall as well. Koro will riff walk himself out of the... But no, he wants to be aggressive, actually. EDG going to keep pushing in the minions. Tier 2 in the block goes down as well. Dev just goes in with the Valkyrie. Wants to get the kill. Does get an Aluka. We'll get the trade, but EDG will claim more. That's a great Zonius coming through for Aluka. Clear up so low, but does just live in Aluka. Nowhere to go, even with the fancy on is an EDG, almost another ace, but UJ's alive again. Yeah, so many kills. The only thing that stops the ace is, of course, the short death time. is only 27 minutes into the game. With all these low health bars, you'd think UJ could do something, but of course has no friends to lantern in whatsoever. They take the bottom lane turret here, and EDG turned on the style. Yeah, the base has been broken now. 10,000 gold ahead for Edward Gaming and World Elite. Just going to have to revel in the fact that, you know what, we didn't lose the bottom inhibitor for now. But Edward Gaming have just played themselves into an unbelievable position. Dragon back up in a minute 30, but EDG might not even need that. And we've been remarking on just how long the games have been this weekend. We've seen multiple 45 to 50 minute games as teams have struggled to close out. We've seen some of the lower teams get a massive advantage and just not been decisive. They're not turret diving. They're not playing to their team comp strengths, but never a concern with EDG. They know exactly what to do, when to do it, and that's why they make League of Legends look so damn easy. You don't get to be number one without being this consistent, Papa Smithy, and you better believe they're damn good as well. EDG now going to move through the red side of the enemy jungle, maybe look to steal away the blue buff, maybe push out the top side as well. EDG pretty much have this game at their feet. It's just a matter of what they want to do next. And so a lot of viewers won't be familiar with just how much Edward Gaming dominated the Chinese scene in 2014, of course now broadcasting the LPL live. You get to see the EDG of this year, but it's a bit different. And the big difference comes from Pawn in the mid lane right here. 
instead of having that wave clear mid laner you instead of having you know drawing out games to the late game and then winning from superior team fighting they have so many more strengths to their bow right now they have pawn who can play initiates we've seen the fizz coming out consistently he can play a tankier champions, he can play utility champs, he can play everything. And because they have so many different ways they play, they look so impressive in every victory. Ninja in trouble though, does get out of the stun. Spirit is going to get altered and dumped there by Pawn. He does Cataclysm Equalizer comes down as well. But Ninja going to claim another tier 2 turret. That's 7 towers to 3 now against World Elite. 22 to 18 kills and just an unbelievable amount of gold. Koro pops his on this to not get death sentence. And Ninja did take the one kill and leave. Yeah, Mako would have been a bit sad to be just losing a bit of health right there. But it means so little on the overall strength. They're Gonna take, they've taken the enemy blue buff, they take the red buff. There's no camps whatsoever available to World Elite. And although we've seen some impressive comebacks this weekend, they've got no resources to come back with Pastry Time. Yeah, I mean, World Elite, you said it before, they have items, they've got good things going on. They had another great early game, but EDG are just far too ahead in this game. And the other thing with EDG is they're just too in control. This is not their team that drops games when they're this far ahead. And look, we would have said the same thing about OMG, we have to be said, but we've seen this weekend dropping two series is quite convincingly. They can come out and blow away teams, and that's when they look wonderful, but they can also struggle. But EDG, again, we have to mention, they were convincingly beaten by LGD. That was a very one-sided series. But since then, that was first week. Now in week four, they've been on a complete tear. I mean, they lost the Snake as well, but you're right. ADG, since they've started picking up speed, have never really looked like droppable. And for me with OMG, fantastic team still. Maybe still the best team in China. Certainly have one of the highest ceilings as far as teams go. They're very good. But OMG, when they lose, seem to lose to themselves. ADG only lose to the enemy team. And look, maybe that's a discussion we'll revisit in playoff time when those teams that can really excel on the day might actually come up and take a playoff. But in a league format, in a long 44-game season... I'm not going to expect any team other than Edward Gaming to be up there at the top if they continue at this pace of the first third of the LPL. And what a pace it is here. EDG just so far. It clearly is camping bushes now with Mako as they're going to rotate down to see what else they can pick up. Then Hip in the bottom lane is back up, so they'll likely want to take that. Aluka trying to set up some sort of brush here. He's actually got a decent amount of damage on this Rumble. Still has the Negatron Cloak from his first back, by the way. Clearly, though, does spot them out. No surprise brush for you. And World Elite will back off towards their turret. So the Mikhail's is on cooldown right here. So the man they want to catch is Pawn. He's the only person with no real semblance of mobility on this Edward Gaming team. That's the one weakness of Vega is that when, look, when he hits the, the uh, event horizon, you're in a lot of trouble. But he can be aggressed on. He can be assassinated. That's their real chance into this game. It looks okay. That does get knocked up. It's all true drop right in a good spot. Spirit, though, just gets eaten by Pawn again. And Pawn still has his ulti. Aluka just gets ulti. Can't zone it. And Ninja now getting do dove on by Koro. Koro trying to clean it out. Does get the kill into Ezreal. They're going to chase down UJ here. So Lesti Wisey gets cleaned up by Mako of all champions. Koro does get hooked up under the tower, but I don't think he might do it. Clear up. All right, and Inazonia's there for Koro to go in. Another 4-0 victory for EDG, and this is probably just game. So the death timers are actually quite long here. 30 seconds plus on all the carries. So they're going to try and finish. And finish they will here, and in style. EDG have played another fantastic game, almost another perfect game of League of Legends this weekend. That's 5-0 and zero for Edward Gaming. And the only question left for them is in the last game of the weekend, can they go 6-0? Yeah, 6-0 the dream is what we anointed the run they were looking for this week to open up a lead. They would have been mathematically ahead of OMG, whatever the results of other series is. But given the results, they're going to be five points clear of Snake, six points clear of OMG. And on this pace, I can't see any other result. They're playing wonderfully well. Yeah, we'll see a replay there as well, just to see how much control EDG had in this game. So again, the gold is so even at this point. 2,000 gold is the lead. This is when we were already kind of writing the script of what was going to happen this game, but there was still a realistic chance of World Elite coming back. So we'll roll the tape right here and start the replay. It's a very good equalizer coming in, and Deft is super chunked out. Look at that. He's basically on single units of health right there. True Shot Barrage doesn't get the kill, but we'll see the smart skirmish coming here. The Mikhail's Crucible on pawn for that death sentence won them the fight. That was such a massive cooldown. Of course, Event Horizon was back available right here. Koro shows up, and this Cassidy, it means business right here. He's so strong, and look at the team working together. Nobody is left alone. Nobody is left to fend for themselves. The grouping and the use of skills is so wonderful. Koro on Cassidy, and you can't get away from that guy. And EDG looking great. Only just noticed, by the way, that Mako monsoons two people into the Event Horizon stun in that last little skirmish. The alley -oop was strong. Yeah, they alley -ooped him into the Event Horizon. Insane game from Edward Gaming. Can they do it again? We're going to find out very soon. Don't leave because Edward Gaming might just win a game in about 30 minutes again. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back for game.